We're here on Overtime. Here's a question. Regarding last week's mortgage settlement, have the banks paid a fair price for the damage they caused to the housing market? Oh, not even close. No? It's getting, it's getting worse. They're going to be able to pay their fines with taxpayer money. Now, what was the settlement? It was for 25 They, they, they paid back 25 cents, and we give them $10 billion in a tax break. I mean, the whole thing is, look, it, it's, it's a bad deal. Never should have been cut. The only good news, Eric Schneiderman is going to investigate and continue to investigate and hold their feet to the fire. You agree with that, Steve? No, I, th I think the big problem with the housing crisis was that uh, banks and mortgage people took out bad mortgages and, and to treat people who are underwater on their, on their mortgages as victims. Look, the one thing I don't want to do, I don't want to pay for other people's mortgages. I've got a bumper sticker on my car, honk if I paid your mortgage, and everywhere I go, people are honking at me. I mean, I'm sick. Are this you is sure how that's, that's why they're honking <laughs> this, this, this is how the Tea Party movement started. People are tired of having to pay for other people's mistakes. Oh, okay. But well, we paid for the bank's mistakes. <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't have done that either. Yeah, but we did. Yeah. That's the problem. But what shape would the country be in if we hadn't done that? What if we hadn't paid for the bank's mistakes? What if we hadn't bailed we, we, out we should... the American automobile industry? Uh, I mean, I saw the head of GM yesterday on the news say, look, I'm not trying to get political. He didn't want, he said, I don't, I don't want to alienate anyone who might buy a car as a Republican. But he said, if Obama didn't do that, we'd be dead. What we should have done is cut a deal with the banks that made sense right. way back when we gave right. them the $10 trillion. We should have said, now you reform the mortgages, change your practices, restructure the industry. Be banks, not hedge funds. And, and they, they, should, they missed the opportunity. And we should have put Fannie and Freddie out of business, which we still Maybe haven't so. done. Maybe three so. Years, three years here's, here's one you and I might agree on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does President Obama's budget adequately address entitlement spending? Is that, I, a, is I, is I that say, a trick question? No. <laughs> I say no. Obviously I no. I bet you you say no. No, obviously, there's no entitlement reforms. Really and, and these things are, these are what, these are like no, they're, Pac-Man. They're eating the whole budget. They're eating our whole country. Yeah. Well, there, there is some. I mean, yeah, there's, I think there's 360 billion cut out of. Yeah, out Medicare. of like 10 trillion of we're just going to spend over the next 10 years. None of it myself. is going through, so it doesn't matter. Right. I mean, the budget yeah. doesn't matter at all. It's been passed in a couple years. Well, you, that's what presidents do. They release a budget. It's sort of a blueprint to work off of. At least this budget from this president was, for the first time, what he wanted, I thought. Right. I thought he's. I think he's learning to negotiate. Start right. with what you really want, Who's honest? and when you come back to yeah. the middle, you'll get half of what you want, as opposed to give it away. Up thinking front. the other guys are nice. Uh, how much would voter turnout be affected if elections were held on Saturdays? Oh, I think a lot. I think a lot more people would vote if they had. And this is what most countries have. You know, it's a holiday. It should be a holiday. You shouldn't have to like leave work. And or maybe not be able to vote at all because you have to work, you know, or, or do electronic, electronic, or and that. There, there's so many ways, and the, the issue of fraud in voting. Of course, you got to be vigilant. We all believe in that. It's really a canard. We can do so many things to get voter participation to the point where it is in Australia, other countries. We should. I'm not sure yeah. about the uh, 1829 demographic though with Saturday voting. I think they like getting out of work and going on Tuesdays. But people, lots Sometimes. of people can't get out of work. <laughs> Well, that's true. Lots of poor people, you know, their boss is not going to say, you sure, take off two hours. Yeah. I mean, I think the last two or three elections we've had would be different if more people could have gotten off from work or weren't, weren't working that day. You we, mean McCain might have won? That's <laughs> not. No, I was thinking more of the Bush election. You know, the, you know, the, the other idea I always liked was have one person who votes get a lottery ticket worth a million dollars. So everybody's going to turn out and vote and hope they get the one ticket. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I don't know whose idea it was, but yeah, we'd all show up, right? That's, I never heard that, right? Yeah, yeah. So bribe them, just like they, <laughs> Hey, it works. They, <laughs> it's, you know, they're doing that with kids in school now. They, you know, they're, that's right, good grades, you get, you really get money. Bribing kids that's to right. go to school. I, I don't know if that's the best <laughs> psychological to message to send in this country, that we have to pay you to vote hey. and go to school. <laughs> we are such greedy bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, why is Obama becoming the worst pot president ever? Why doesn't he honor his pledge not to interfere in state medical marijuana rights? Um, well, my theory is because he's got a lot of other things on his plate. And that's another. A good one. That's another issue you and I agree on: is legalizing pot for uh, marijuana. For I mean, uh, marijuana for medical purposes. I mean, why shouldn't people? It, it, it is a, a very effective painkiller for people on uh, chemotherapy and so on. And it's it's cruel. Why, why does it have to be just medical? <laughs> well, I, I'm with you on that too. Really? Yeah, yeah I, mean, I am. I'm a libertarian. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, Are do you, you with think us that, on that? Yeah. 
medical okay. marijuana? Yeah. See, we got to... And what about regular? <laughs> you know, look, we should decriminalize it. Yep. Because yep. Yep. To, to spend prosecutorial resources on pot is it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yep. It's ridiculous. Well, is there a difference between legal and decriminal? Yeah, I mean, basically... You don't put people in jail. Yeah, you, you, know, yeah, I mean, you don't put them in jail, you give them a $5 yeah, so, fine. So, so why, why not just like legalize a speeding it? Ticket. We, we probably should. I mean, well, I think so about things... why a fine? A $5 <laughs> fine? No, no, I'd be in favor of legal, legalized <laughs> pot. <laughs> Legalizing pot is, is the right way to go. Look, I got him over right here on the air. I got <laughs> yeah. him over from decriminal to legal. Great. After the show, we'll get him over to... <laughs> He's never uh, going to get reelected now. <laughs> uh, do you think that Chris Christie's veto of the gay marriage bill is not only dickish... <laughs> but also extremely short-sighted. Well, it depends on what short-sighted you're going for. I mean, the guy's probably going to run in 2016. So for him... Running for president, you're talking Running for president. If not before. If, if, if not before. Well, yeah, if not before on ticket. But he, he's doing it for his base. But, yeah, I mean, you know, when we went through the don't ask, don't tell reversal about a year ago, there were eight Republicans in the Senate who sided with Democrats on that. And five of them were moderates from blue states, and three of them were younger conservative Republicans. So I think it's sort of a generational thing. It was John Ensign, mm -hmm. Richard Burr, and Lisa Murkowski. But it's it's more of a generational thing. And yeah, in 20 years, it'll probably be a more normalized thing for most states. Okay. But, but New, I mean, New Jersey, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's my home state. So I, I take these things a little personally, you know. When somebody from New Jersey does something that I consider sort of backward, and I consider this sort of backward on the part of the governor, it bothers me. It's like, you know, New Jersey, the most made fun of state. He's growing up. That's true. Growing up, when you're Fact. from New Jersey, there are, and right. it's not just from people from far away, it's people in the area <laughs> right. making fun of New Jersey. So the one thing we had was always like, well, we're from the sophisticated state of New Jersey, from the Northeast. We're not some, like, you know, yokel car on the lawn state. You know, we're not from Alabama or Kansas <laughs> or somewhere. And then when governors, the governor does something like this or, or said that evolution was none of your business, it just really, really bothers me. It just really does. It, it, it takes away the one thing I had. Well, look, but, but can I say this? It is typical of so much that Chris Christie does. I mean, he panders to the very conservative on pronouncements on all sorts of issues, and, you know, he's just wrong on the fundamentals. Could he be the savior of the party if they go to a, a convention? If the, if the he's by far the most no. attractive candidate. Oh. He's, he's, he's gifted. He's, he's, yeah. got a, he's tough. He's a good speaker. And look, uh, you know, uh, this is... You want to have this next presidential election be about gay marriage? I mean, no, that, no, that's one of the reasons that the the Democrats lost. Right. In yeah, 2008. but look, on, on the idea of a savior for the Republican Party, I have met next to no one who has said, "I just can't wait for President Rick Santorum." I've met a few right. who say that about Mitt Romney. I, I've met a ton of people who really want Chris Christie be, to be the next. Chris president. Christie's your your worst nightmare. Why? Because he could win. Because he could win. Yeah. Well, then he could be that guy. Right. Okay. I don't buy it. But I'm a Democrat, so what do I know? <laughs> I, I, would, I would rather the Democrats run against Rick Santorum than Chris Christie. Absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, I agree, <laughs> agree with that. agree with that. But I don't, I don't think Chris Christie withstands the scrutiny, because when you look at so many of the positions he's taken, I just don't think people at the end of the day, either in the Com Republican yeah, compared Party... To, you don't understand. Compared to Rick Santorum's no, 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 you look, no, no, you can't use Rick Santorum. Let's bomb Iran and outlaw yeah. fucking... You don't understand. I think... I, 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 <laughs> I Look, think Chris Christie... You both are missing the point. 40% of Americans are uh, obese. He's got 40% of the, of the vote <laughs> right, locked up. <laughs> All right, we got to go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, panel. We'll see you next week. Real Time with Bill Maher. Ask Bill and his guests your questions right after the show at HBO.com.